Okay, in this video I'm going to, going to continue on with exercise 1b and the question I'm going to do is question number 13. Now this question reads as follows. Find a condition uh, on four vectors if, and you're given uh, two sets of conditions. Uh, actually, you know something, it's probably easier to do that to write it. So you're given vectors P, Q, R, and S. This is question 13. All right, and you're told that P i hat plus Q j hat is parallel to R i hat plus S j hat. Now, I've done a question in the past about two vectors being perpendicular, so. Actually, question 12 is, is, the, is the exact same as this, except using the condition for being perpendicular. So, if it's perpendicular, that means, of course, what? It means the two vectors have an angle of 90 degrees between them. So, that's the way you should think about that. Well, if, if they're parallel, therefore, theta is equal to 0 degrees. Alright, that's how you see that two vectors are parallel, because they're facing the same direction. So if you have, <coughs> excuse me, your xy plane, or your Cartesian plane, with unit vectors such that j hat is in that direction, i hat is in that direction. And if I draw <coughs> now a vector here, and here, and here, and here, and here, whatever. Now, assuming that my drawing is OK, and these are actually parallel. Well, then they're all uh, they're all facing the same direction. Now, uh, also say that their length is the same. I know I haven't drawn that really. We'll say the length is the same. That means their magnitude is the same. And as I've said before, that means they're all the same vector because you can pick up a vector and move it around. And so long as it's facing the same direction with the same magnitude, then it's the same vector. The question really here is like, of course, you could pick up this vector and move it to the origin in order to find out uh, you could to find out its angle or you could pick up the origin and move the origin to the vector but that's the exact same thing so you could do something like this you could just literally draw it like that there's nothing nothing wrong with that or you could just draw a smaller one you could do anything like that it doesn't really matter as long as you understand the concept that provided they're facing the same direction and they have the same magnitude well then it doesn't really matter where they are they're still the same vector so anyway, when we're talking about two vectors being parallel, well, this say these are, say this is a vector of magnitude five, and this is a vector of magnitude six. Now they're no longer the same vector; they're facing the same direction, but their magnitude is not the same. All right. Now, however, because they're facing the same direction, they are parallel. Of course, if they were, excuse me, having an angle of ninety degrees between them, then they would be perpendicular. I think that should be fairly self-explanatory, and I know you've definitely seen that in school in the past. So the question is this: How do we show these par show these vectors are parallel? So we have P i plus Q j is parallel to R i plus S j. So to find the con the condition, we got to find the condition. So let's first of all look at the vector. I'm going to call it a is equal to P i hat. <coughs> excuse me plus q j hat. Alright, well then what do we do? We do as we've always done before. You draw your Cartesian plane, or your xy plane, or your xy axis. I'm going to imply the same unit vectors as the ones here. Alright, we draw it. So, it could be anywhere of course. It could be plus plus, minus plus, minus minus, plus minus. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to say it's up here. Look, I'm going to say there's my vector there. Now, remember, this is the resultant vector adding its components pi plus qj. Therefore, if you want to add the two vectors, well, let's draw the two component vectors. You could say you drop the perpendiculars, or you could just physically go there, like that. You could do that, because that's how you add vectors. You put the tail of the second and the head of the first, and draw the resultant vector from the, head, the tail of the second to the head of the first. It's the exact same thing. You should be understanding these concepts at this stage. That's theta. So, uh, what's the magnitude of 
the uh, <coughs> excuse me the vector in the i hat direction or the x axis direction. Well, that's p. This one is q. So the angle is what? Well, p and q. We, we know that we have S O H C A H T O A Sakatoa. Yes, sine opposite over hypotenuse, cosine opposite. Sorry, adjacent over hypotenuse, tangent opposite over adjacent. So we know that, for example, tan of theta is equal to what? It's equal to q over p. Fair enough. And similarly, of course, if we were to draw, similarly, if we were to draw, uh, if we were to draw another one, another vector uh, with its component vectors here, call it alpha, and now this one is going to be what? We've already done this vector, so it's going to be r plus s. So here's r, here's s, therefore alpha, sorry, tan alpha, Excuse me, sorry, tan alpha is equal to <coughs> s over r. Now, if they are equal, well then the angle between the two angles here should be zero or let me, let me, okay, look, just bear with me a moment, right, so theta is equal to inverse tan of q over p, q, atom over p, and uh, alpha is equal to inverse tan of s over r. Now bear with me a moment. Q over p and s over r. So q over p and s over r uh, inverse tan So what we have is a Cartesian plane again, the usual unit vectors. Okay, and we have two vectors. This one, and we'll say this one doesn't matter what way they go. We have an angle theta and an angle alpha. Now if they're parallel, what does that mean? Well, if they're parallel, surely angle theta equals angle alpha. Because if I was to extend the this angle theta up, 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 then I'd be moving the vector up like this, and eventually, what would it be? It would be parallel to the vector, um, whatever vector I call it there, but this vector here. So we know that, uh, we know that this must be equal to this, so you have tan inverse q over p is equal to tan inverse s over r alright and just to finish this question then well if we look we have tan inverse q over p is equal to tan, tan inverse s over r and you can just cancel that and you're going to get q over p is equal to s over r and if that condition is met well then your vectors are parallel and you know something you should be able to see it very very quickly you should be able to actually just you should, you, I suppose you should be able to have a feel for it well because remember the angle here is a ratio it is a ratio oh I've drawn two excuse me there it's it's a ratio of this side and this side this side and this side so the only way that this angle and this angle can be equal is if these two ratios are the same and here we have a ratio, one divided by the other, that's their, their, their ratio is like that. And uh, that's how you make sure two vectors are parallel.